you had a dream and it happened to come through tonight. Yeah, it came true tonight. Uh, we worked so hard. It was a hard fought game and we finally got a championship and it feels great. Now you said for your 21 years, you said you've always dreamed of winning a championship. Is it what you dreamed of? Oh, it's everything and more. I mean, you have the, the Laker colors falling from the ceiling, the fans going crazy. I got the hat on and everything covering my throat. It feels great. Hold on here, Gus. And uh, off the court, Cole was uh, all business, man. He was serious <laughs> at like 16 years old, which was crazy to me because at 16 years old, man, you just want to be a kid, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? When you want to talk about the swagger, oof. I mean, Kobe had it. I used to tell people about the McDonald's game, like when he was there, he had a certain aura and a certain presence about him that we all knew he was going to be great. And that was the first time I started to see someone that had, you know, the mindset, you know, mm -hmm. of a killer. Well, yeah, I think a lot of it um, had to do with um, isolation. Growing up over there and being the only uh, African-American kid. Not being able to speak the language. I gravitated towards the game. And in that game, you find a lot of, um, you find solace in the game. Throughout the course of my life, it's always been that. It's always been the outsider having to come in and prove, you know, or, or to seek some sort of vengeance when I play. Like, I, I mean, I've been around a lot of great players, right? But I ain't never been around somebody like him that just had kill on his mind all day and all night. Like, it was basketball 24 7. You know what I mean? From day one at like 16, 17 years old. But that just told you his mindset of the game at, at a young age. Unfortunately, because of the lack of communication with my peers, I wasn't invited to parties or you know friendly, friendly gatherings on the weekend. So on Fridays and Saturdays, I would go in my rec room with my basketball and basically dribble myself to sleep. Uh, he was practicing that pregame. Then when you play with kids that you know, might not uh, accept you, because you're an outsider. It was many times where, you know, we were sitting, sitting in the room and we, we would just have just random conversations about guys we were playing against uh, the next next day in, in the AAU game. And his mind was on the NBA. Uh, Kobe Bryant have decided to take my talent to uh, No, I have decided to skip college and take my time to the NBA. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. This guy is 200 pounds at six foot six. He is an offensive whiz. He's very, very talented. He has all pro moves. And when, when you, you look at him, you're talking about a young man with range. He can go off the dribble. He can get his shot. And in every place that he worked out, nothing but raves. No one talking about any shortness or a weakness in his game. You know, you get drafted, you get on the phone with the GM of the team that drafted you and all sorts of stuff. So I get on the phone with the Charlotte GM, and he just tells me, hey, you know what's going on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you got media in front of you and all that. And he goes, well, it's a good thing we're trading you because we couldn't have used you anyway. What? You mother... F <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what happened on draft night. So I was already, I was already triggered. I used to watch Magic Johnson bring the ball up the court at night. I used to envision myself, you know, in the hallways at the house, knocking down lamps and... Believe me, we're not going to be able to keep this guy under under uh, wraps or under cover. His uh, ability will shine through him very quickly. Baby mambas are notoriously nervous and highly aggressive. This mamba will learn how much venom is necessary in order to immobilize each specific case. Sometimes bypassing venom altogether if the prey is small and helpless.
remember what you told me one day in the forum when I first met you? You said you were going to be the finish it for me. What, the greatest player of all time? Yes. You remember you told me that? No, but that sounds, that sounds something. No, that sounds like it. something I would say. <laughs> but for me, when I got into the league, Kobe Bryant was the bar. You know, he was the greatest player in the game uh, to me uh, before I got in the league. But definitely when I got there, I mean, he was someone, I think he was 24 years old at the time when I got in. He had three NBA championships already. So game one of the NBA Finals is underway. The Lakers controlling the opening tip. See Kobe checking the clock. Good job by Kittles, but he was able to throw it. And that's what separates Kobe and Shaq. I can remember the defining moment for Kobe. We were playing, a lot of guys on the court at Utah. Utah was killing us in the playoffs. His last three shots were air balls. Five seconds left. Four. Bryant drives. Pull out. Shot on the way. No good. Power below rebounds. We go to overtime. Bounce. Wide right. Van Exel takes stock away. Cross court left. Open. Kobe drives to three. Another air ball. He sits back to back air ball. Jazz basketball. Hard to believe. Van Exel, Van Exel backs it out straight away to Kobe Bryant. Bryant for three. It's short again. Air ball. Air ball. Three times. He shot air ball. So for the court. Jazz living. Stockton. All over. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Here's a three-pointer. Air ball at the end. For Kobe Bryant. Another air ball. Four seconds left. It's Stockton. It's over. It's over. He had his head down, and I remember putting my arm around him and saying, you know what, don't worry about a young fella. One day people are going to fear you taking the last shot. And he just, you know, became to be, you know, one of, you know, the greatest players. And if anybody know Kobe, he did everything like Mike. The fadeaway, the tongue, he, he went ball. When that didn't work the first year, he was like, you know what, I'm going to be my self. Yeah. You know, he came out with his first shoe, and you know, when I seen him with the hair, he was a different cat. That was way back when he was 18. Now the 19-year-old veteran is making the types of impression that Van Gogh and Monet would be proud of. Here we got a dribble drive, change of direction by Bryant, slam dunk. He's the league's leading scorer off the bench and much more. He's one of the most focused and competitive guys I've ever seen, period. Went up to the rafter. He feels that he's, he's unstoppable and I label him probably the next Michael Jordan. You know, Cole was like, he was a one-on-one -on -one thing. His favorite saying was, I'm the best one-on-one -on -one player in the league. Can't nobody hold me one-on-one. -on -one. But that second year, Kobe really didn't care. Like, he was just like determined. Like, I, I, I always say myself, cream gonna rise to the top. Two three-pointers in overtime, air balls. When you walked off the court, how responsible did you feel for not advancing to the next round? I felt very responsible, but that's the way I like it. If, you, if, if we're gonna end our season, if we're going to lose that game, you know, I'd rather have it on my shoulders than anybody else. I would not be able to sleep myself if I didn't take those shots. Who are you benching now? Dang, I can't give out my secrets oh, now. Oh, come on now. I can't let people know what I'm benching. What can you, Max? Uh, I can't say. Yeah, hit the weights, dunking that motherfucker, talking shit. Uh, I mean, he was dunking on bigs. He was, he was just a different cat from when I seen him. This year, I can pinpoint things before they actually happen. This guy got more confidence. And after, after the way the season ended last year, I just wanted to come back hard and just show everybody that I'm back. Don't forget about me. Where do you expect this team to be in the postseason? We're going to the finals. Looks like he's going to get his wish. In two and a half seconds, it appears he will. Jackson looking to throw it in against Shaq. Reggie turns and pumps it up. This is it, fellas. You work all year long for it, man. Shaq the man, most dominant player in the world. Championship, SARS. Love it. It's beautiful. Mwah. 2G, baby. You love it. We out. I'm going to Disneyland. After the first championship, I'm happy. Matter of fact, in my mind, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Now I can go do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm here. We go through the parade, do that. Boom. I jump on the plane, take the family back to Orlando. 
I'm sitting. Oh, Kobe and them got their first championship. Can they get another one? Right. Will they be known as 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 as, as, as a Laker dynasty? Can they do it again? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm I'm mad. I'm upset. One thing I I know I got. I know I got a guy that's gonna be ready. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, that he wants this thing. He's, it's it, it affects him. I right? mean, he, he's it consumes him. And then from that moment on, I knew we spoke the same language. It doesn't matter if we had disagreements with any other. Our drive to win, like we have to win. There's there's no other option. All right, we're going to figure this out. We're going to get this done. This is the first time since 1983 that the 76ers are in the finals. Fourth straight time that Philadelphia faces the Lakers as their opponent. Kobe Bryant going up against his hometown ball club. 10 of 16 in the first half. How did you have the confidence? Because when Shaq went out, you told your teammates, I want the ball, and then you made that big basket. Bryant played well by Bill. Kobe Bryant. Say that again. I love you, Kobe. Well, all we did, we just threw the ball in the, in the shack and let them double team. And, you know, when they collapsed their defense, we just kick it out to our shooters and everybody was making shots. You love him as well? All right, I'm right back at him, man. <laughs> O'Neal, oh, shot. Hit 10 straight for the Lakers. will make it a second straight NBA crown. The best all-time playoff winning percentage in the history of the league. And the Lakers controlling the opening tip. Kobe Bryant. Iron shot's not going to have any here. Bryant. The Los Angeles Lakers have made it three straight championships. They wrap it up in the four-game sweep by beating the Nets 113 to 107. Kobe Bryant coming up big in the fourth quarter. A team for the ages as they get better before our very eyes. Congratulations to the Lakers, the city of Los Angeles, their coaching staff, their ownership in particular, Dr. Jerry Buss. My fourth time in the finals. Thanks to that man right over there. If I didn't have you, I would have probably, you know, wore my body out, you know, just try to get ready, you know, just try to get it back again. But it worked out for us, though, because I came back and I wanted to do more, right? And I think you playing yourself in the shape of the course of the season gave me the opportunity to do more and to expand, to try different things and to push different things. And then when you got in the shape, it was hard then to try to fill to try to dial that back. Right. Right? Because I'm out there going 40, you know, 45, 50, you know, all sorts of stuff. It feels like, okay, we got to rein you back in now. Rein me back in for what? No, no, I'm not getting reined back in. No. There was so much conversation during the Shaq years. Were you guys friends? No. All you need to know is when we go out there and play, we're together. Yeah. Period. You know, you know, big fella got to be happy. I want to win. He wants to win. And that's all we're concerned about. How much of what happens off the court comes into play on What was the problem? Why, why, why couldn't you coexist? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm obsessive. I, mean, I believe we need to work um, night and day and figure out how to get to where we need to go. And he wanted to do it a different way. What do we want down there at the other end? Uh, You're a far leg. I ain't touching it. My side leg. All right. And so there was constant challenge there to get that done. I mean, it was, it was, but I wasn't going back down from it, and neither was he. You know, he felt I should play a certain way, give the ball into him. I said, I'll give the ball into you if you work. If you don't work, you don't get the ball. He said, throw me the ball. No, work. There was a personality conflict with Kobe because, you know, they each felt that, you know, uh, it was their team, and, 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 and obviously Phil Jackson was involved in this. And In role-playing, a lot of times as a coach, you see guys want to have a space that they kind of define as, this is my area. You know, Kobe's saying, don't, don't talk about my game, don't, I won't talk about yours. 
What does, when people say whose team is it, what does that mean to you? Don't mean a damn thing to me. No, I just, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just not figuring that out 20 years later. Yeah, that means it's, 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 um, then it did though. You know, see, here's the thing. I, I never really understood that then. I, Phil really enjoyed um, being able to, 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 to throw those little quotes out there to create that tension. But Phil was very not confrontational. Yeah, he was. Right? Very indirect. He, you couldn't get a straight thing from him. Right? He was always kind of going this way to try to create this tension within the team that he believed in his mind we would figure out later. It's going to be messy now, but when they figure it out, it's going to be like this big kumbaya moment. And then, thud. What had been rumored for weeks became a reality in about a span of 23 hours and 58 minutes. Shaq traded to the Heat. Kobe re-ups with the Lakers. Colleen Dominguez had a long chat with Big Fella. Jim Gray, a rap session with Kobe. Drama. One thing about Kobe, Kobe was myopic, and he just wanted to win. And if you were in his way as an opponent, mm -hmm. he got you out of the way. And if you were in his way as a teammate, guess what? He treated you the same way. He got you out of the way. I remember watching Crazy Jim Gray, and Jim oh, yeah. Gray, yeah, Kobe said, why should he have to, yeah. right? So, that was you know, yeah. I was, man, I, I couldn't, I couldn't drive to practice fast enough. Now that, this was me at my craziest. This is, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to drive to practice, we're going to fight, it's going to be awesome, right. make it beat to a pulp, but God, you know what? It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. And that's why I came to practice, yeah. completely expecting that to happen, and I think, I think B. Shaw might have calmed, yeah. calmed yeah. everybody down. <laughs> yeah. He was waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was waiting. No, the funny thing is, I saw the article the night before. Uncle Jerome usually meets me at the house so we can ride together. So he wasn't there, so I wanted to beat him anyway. So I left the house at 8. As soon as I get to the radio, he was like... I knew, I knew the fire that I lit. I knew what I said. And he knew what he said. You knew what you said. And you said, okay, this is it. It's coming to a head. We're gonna go in here. We're gonna be grown men about it. We're gonna fight it out. And then what comes out of it comes out of it. And that's just, just is what it is at that point. They didn't have an appreciation. Shaq didn't have necessarily an appreciation of Kobe until it was too late. Until uh, him and Phil had had beaten mm -hmm. him up so bad uh, that 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 Kobe just wanted out and wanted away. And and because he wanted away, and they figured that it was better for for Shaq to move on. When was the last time you talked to Kobe? I don't know. I don't care. I don't know. If Kobe Bryant called you on your cell phone right now, what would you say to him? I don't have a cell phone. Kobe Phil Jackson has left the organization and Shaquille O'Neal. It's a wide-ranging perception in the public that you were at the controls. How much did you have to do with both of their departures? Oh, zero. Nothing. But, you know, people's perception always want to run with the biggest story. What do you think of Kobe Bryant as a person? Doesn't matter what I think think about him as a person. When I was out there on the court doing my job, I played team ball. Could it have been worked out between the two of you? Could you guys have coexisted? Yeah, oh, absolutely. No, we have. <laughs> no, we've had our spats. We've had our share of arguments on the floor. Um, you know, for various reasons. He, you know, used to get mad at me for not playing team basketball. I used to get mad at me because he wasn't in tip-top shape. Uh, do you so, ever look at Kobe and kind of say, be, be careful what you wish for? <laughs> uh, Come doesn't on. Matter. Doesn't matter what I think. Doesn't matter what I think. But, uh, you know, some people don't do certain things to, to get that power. Be careful what you wish for. You said it. Didn't come out of my mouth. <laughs> you know, but ultimately, you know, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be playing for the Lakers. And uh, this is a happy day. I'm excited about it, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sad day because my partner in crime is not here anymore. They had obviously tremendous highs with those uh, uh, three-peat championships. And uh, uh, to see that excellence of one of the greatest tandems in the history of, of, of basketball. Uh, but they also had some, some really, really, really low lows. Say, listen, if, if this is the conversation, I don't want this conversation. 
when I retire, I don't want people to say, okay, he only won because of Shaq. As unfair as that is, Magic never won without Cap, right? Michael never won without Scotty. So, but here I am getting stuck with this argument, which is not fair, but yet this is the argument people will make, and I'm not okay with that. And so therefore, I knew, okay, I gotta, I gotta go.